Hey friends, welcome to another episode of At Home with Eastbrook Homes. On today's episode, Molly Frizzacoli is joining us and she is gonna give you tips on what you can do to decorate your home in time for the summer. As I said, our guest is Molly, and she is obviously uh, someone who owns a home with Eastbrook Homes, but is a home decor guru, and I am so excited to talk to you today, Molly. How are you? Doing great. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. It it is. So let's, uh, you know, the fascinating part about you, and I say this a lot in my other work when I talk about marketing and trying to understand your customers, that when someone would look at Molly and what Molly does for a living, they might not necessarily land on home decor guru. So what, you know, what got you into the interiors homes and how did you develop it into a skill set? You got it. So I actually do mortgages. So I'm looking at appraisals in people's homes all day long. So I started to kind of see like, oh, if we tweak that a little bit, it might help open up this space and Pinterest. Who doesn't love Pinterest for (laughs) inspiration, right? So I started to really just kind of dive in and find what do I love? What speaks to me and bringing it into my house? And a lot of it is trial and error too. try something. Don't love it. No problem. Something we can change. What brought you to Eastbrook Homes then? What was how did that kind of come together? Yes. So the community number one really drew us in. We have three children. And the first time we drove through here, it was a summer day. There were tons of kids outside. And it looks like this is the place where you want to raise a family because the neighbors love each other. The kids love each other. It's just a fun atmosphere. Then come to find out you get to do a custom build. You pick your floor plan. You pick your colors. You pick your finishes. So the home that you're building is really your own. And I love that. To create a space that I get to customize and pick and to truly make our own it felt like freedom for sure. Now, one of the things that you are very, very good at is this idea of seasonal decor, which I'm going to be telling you straight up is something that my wife and I have struggled with often, right? How much is too much? You know, if you just put a bunny out for Easter, does that count? Like what, you know, so when you're designing your home with Eastbrook, were you kind of thinking that in mind, like here are the rooms that we could change seasonally and how I might do that? Or what was that process like for you? Because I imagine for somebody who loves that sort of space, that was fun for you. Yes. So curb appeal, of course, was one of the forefront things on my mind. I wanted to be able to have a porch that I could decorate, add some chairs to, add some cute pillows, add decor. So it would really make the front of our house pop. And people would say, oh, we know that the Zacharyllis live there because it's decorated for every season. Also, having a nice open floor plan where we can add elements in one room and it kind of ties through the whole house. We love that open floor fan concept that Eastbrook has. So even if we add a couple of things in the kitchen and maybe only one small thing in the living room, it still feels like a nice cohesive space. Okay, I wanna stop there for a half a second because you said something that I think for a lot of people who home decor might not be their core competency is a tough thing to manifest in their brain. You know, you talked about having something that travels throughout the house, right? An anchor piece that starts here and kind of goes through this open floor plan. Can you give me, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, but can you give me an example if somebody wants to get into that space and try that design aesthetic? What is a piece that they could bring into their home that could anchor in? Well, you, we will use your exact example. You've got an open floor plan, but you have a kitchen. What's the thing you could put in the kitchen and then drive that design aesthetic through the rest of the house? Yeah, one thing with an open floor plan is like the dining room table. Adding some little centerpieces on that dining room table and having them be specific to the season is a great way to kind of get a start. Of course, you know, that's the place that brings family together. We have a ton of family that gathers in the kitchen. So that's kind of the main focal point. Spring might be over for most most people to decorate at this point. But as we're thinking about summer, Molly, what are the trends that you're seeing? And what is your home going to morph into, let's say, as we get into May, June, July? Fresh flowers is always a good staple at our house. I mean, we are so lucky on West Michigan to have some really great farmers markets, flower shops nearby. So getting that nice sense of fresh flowers to add that color. I try to keep our outdoor fairly, you know, kind of monotone, but those flowers are what really allows me to customize it. And if I change my mind in a couple of weeks and I want blue flowers, I can just go grab some new fresh flowers and add that. Um, keeping things kind of, you know, 
consistent, right? That way it is easy to transition new pieces in. So we kind of pick a theme of blues, blacks, grays, and whites, trying to keep it consistent, but I can add additional pops of color with each season. So it doesn't feel like every seasonal change, I have to go buy a whole sure. new, you know, a box full of decor. Is that a good starting place for somebody who wants to do that? Like if they want to do it on a budget, right? They don't want to redo their whole house is kind of picking a, a tight color palette and kind of building off of that. You got it. It's a great place to start or even starting in kind of a smaller space. A kitchen again is where a lot of people gather. So starting with just some delicate pieces on the countertop, finding a mood or a tone that fits your needs, adding maybe some things on the kitchen table, and then just kind of expanding from there. I feel like if you try to take on the whole house at once, it feels very overwhelming. But trying to, you know, isolate it down to maybe one area, keep within a smaller color palette, that will help. And then you can start to learn what you love and what brings joy and what you might not necessarily love to see every day. What sort of things uh, inspire you in the long term, right? Seasonally, I'm sure, and we'll get to that in a second, but you know, what sort of things are you constantly looking at that are giving you either color ideas, texture ideas, any sort of thing like that? Inspiration, of course, a lot of it comes from Pinterest. Like I said, I'll sit up if I can't sleep at night. It's a great place to start. But I also find inspiration in what brings joy. I want my house to be one that's full of bright, open, airy, a place where people come in and they feel like it's not too neat. It's lived in. I can have fun here. But it also, it looks intentional. It looks like a space where people enjoy their time. She cares about, you know, what's on the wall. There's new pictures for all of the seasons. So a space that feels intentional, but lived in is our goal. All right, so I'm I'm gonna kind of go in after that one because I think that's if you ha if you are a parent, um, that is a struggle to have it yes. look organized yet lived in and still have the space where people. Because I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess just in the eight minutes I've spent with you, yours is the house where every kid is coming to play. Fair. We love it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, so what are some tips for parents to kind of manage their household so it doesn't feel like the kids came in and dumped the Nerf guns everywhere and dumped the, you know, water balloons here and blah, 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 blah. But the kids are still able to play and it still feels like a place that I want to go as a kid who is friends with Jack or Jimmy or Sally or whomever. So that is one of the amazing things with building with Eastbrook is their floor plans have that open concept. We have what you call a keeping room. So it's kind of a room off of our kitchen that we use as an actual play space. So it's still, if you look across the way, it still looks like a nice organized part of the house, but we've created a kind of filing system for toys. They have nice little cubbies. We transition our toys out so there's an overwhelming amount. Our kids know where to put them and it feels like a cohesive space. But when the, all the friends come over, all of the kids rush to the playroom they make a muck of that, but the parents still get to enjoy kind of a tranquil space in the living room where we're all able to hang out. Some toys come in and that's okay. We've learned, hey, this is a place for fun. This is a place for gathering and family. And it's going to be messy every once in a while, but it's nice because it's easy for us to tidy up since it's kind of all in one living area. All right, Molly, last question before I let you go because I'm fascinated how you're going to answer this one. Is there a, <laughs> do you have a favorite season? Is there one that you look forward to decorating and enjoying? Absolutely. So Halloween is actually my all time favorite season to decorate for. Love Christmas. Don't get me wrong, but Halloween, I usually pick a theme every year. So as you can tell, I'm kind of a themed person. Last year was skeletons. So we had a 12 foot skeleton in the front yard, skeleton scaling and climbing the house and just really diving in as deep as possible as I can. So it's the most fun house. We had neighbors walking by. I want to be the house where all the kids are like, mom, let's go look at that house again because that looks fun. <laughs> yes. All right, Molly, I will let you get back to your day. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today and have a wonderful rest of the year. Well, thank you so much for having me and good luck with all your decorating.